Hello, welcome to another episode of Webcam Sessions. Next week, we're going to be announcing the winners of the ukulele giveaway, so be sure to look for that. And at the time of this video being posted, the uh, contest is now closed. So um, thank you for all who have entered, but let's talk about what we're going to work on today. Today, I want to talk about the weakness of the ukulele and how we can kind of offset and overcome it in some different ways. So the ukulele has two main weaknesses to it. And those weaknesses are the range of the instrument and the sustain of the instrument. So what do I mean by the range of the instrument? Well, the re range is the tonal range, the amount of space that we essentially have between the lowest note of the instrument and the highest note. And on most ukuleles, our lowest note's going to be either this open C string, or for playing a low G ukulele, it'll be on the G string, it'll be the G below that C note. I'm playing a high G right now, so we'll talk about the high G. This is our lowest note. And our highest note, well, it depends how many frets you have, but most ukuleles have 15 frets, um, or at least 12, but most nowadays have 15, and we're gonna use the 15th fret just as kind of our, our highest note, even though this one does, in fact, go higher. The 15th fret on the A string will be our highest note, which is a C note. So we have a C note here on the C string, and a C note here on the A string. And that's going to span two octaves of difference. And what that means is I've got a C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So I've got three different Cs I can play and the two octaves that span that distance between them. Now that might seem like a lot, but compared to other instruments, it's really small. Um, when you look at a piano, piano will have 88 keys, right? And each one of those keys, essentially from one to the next, is going to be 12 keys between per octave. So you can already tell with a ukulele, we basically have about 24 keys of space, while a piano will have the 88. And that's an enormous difference in terms of how much space there is between the, uh, the instruments. Something like a trumpet or a trombone or a saxophone oftentimes will have an, an octave above what the ukulele will do, or below, right? But it will have more range. And if you look at a guitar, those two extra strings increase the range by quite a bit too, spanning more octaves than a ukulele would. In fact, even a mandolin, which is kind of our, you know, the other small instrument that oftentimes the uke might be compared to, it's got a much larger range than the ukulele because of its tuning. The distance between the strings is larger than a ukulele is. So an open mandolin has a sound that would take us, you know, multiple frets to sort of get. And that's pretty crazy, right? So the range of the ukulele is quite poor in the terms of, you know, the musical world. The other weakness is going to be our sustain. And sustain is how long a note is going to ring. Right? So on a uh, ukulele, if I play my third fret on the A string here, which is a C note, now it's dead, right? So it took about that long for the note to stop ringing, but the moment I play the note, it immediately begins to degrade and decay in terms of its sound. There's no way to increase the sound of a note after it's been played, right? Now other instruments, can totally increase the volume of a note after it's been played. Take the trumpet, for instance, right? The more hot air you're full of, uh, the more you're going to be able to make that note ring and sound and, you know, create tone. Anything that uses kind of our, you know, our, our wind, uh, so all brass instruments and wind instruments, everything else, is going to be able to have a lot more sustain, a lot, lot more sustain than something like an ukulele would. Now, a guitar, in some ways, has the same weakness of sustain as a ukulele, but the biggest difference is the body itself. Because the ukulele is so small, it won't vibrate and resonate quite as long as a giant guitar will. So even a guitar has better sustain than a ukulele, right? The sustain on a uke, if I play a chord, like this G chord, I'm at the mercy of it decaying and stopping before I finally, you know, don't get a sound. So those are the weaknesses. Now, probably thinking, where are we going with this? Well, I want to talk about how we can overcome these weaknesses and what people do within different arrangements of songs to get a bigger, brighter, more sustained, more range sound to kind of offset the weaknesses of the instrument. And the biggest trick, I think, are open strings. 
Whenever we play a string open, it's going to vibrate and sustain longer than a note that is closed, meaning my open G string will ring longer than if I play like my three on the E, right? My open A string is going to vibrate and sustain longer than my nine on the C, right? And that's because when a string is open, there's no kind of human element in it to make it imperfect, right? If I'm fretting a note, I'm automatically going to be sort of uh, not able to make it sustain as long just because my finger is what's essentially stopping the string from ringing versus an open string, which will be kind of perfect, right? No human air is there. So open strings can increase our sustain. They just ring longer, brighter, and louder than when we close the frets. And also with open strings, we get more range. Now that might sound kind of funny because if I play them open, where's the extra range? Well, the, the big deal is if I'm playing a note up higher on the fretboard. Let's say that I, I wanna play this E melody note here at the seventh fret of the A string. And let's say that a C chord goes along with this E note. You might find in a chord book or something playing a C chord, something like this, seven on the C, eight on the E, and seven on the A with my index, ring, and middle fingers. If I play this, sounds like a C chord, okay, but it's very high, all of them are high, and the sustain isn't very good because of that too. Okay. So now if I use open strings instead, I can increase the range as well as increase the sustain. So instead, I'm gonna play my normal everyday C chord. I'm just gonna move that index finger up to the seventh fret on the A string and then get my melody note of that E note I wanted, but I'm gonna play all open with it. And when you hear this, it's going to ring longer because these three open notes are naturally going to ring longer by being open. It's also expanding the tonal range of what we're playing, right? Because now my melody note's up here and the lowest note that I'm playing is all the way at the bottom, the lowest note I can play on the ukulele. And even though this seems immensely simple, right? Because I'm playing all open, that's kind of the trick. And when you watch great players like Jake Shimabukuro and James Hill and Aldrin Guerrero and all these guys, they use a lot of open strings in their instrumentals so that they can maximize kind of their tonal range as well as their sustain of the instrument. So a lot of times we spend so much time looking for chord shapes that work up high and do different things, when really all that we want to do is try to find the melody notes up high and use open strings where we can alongside closed ones to show that sort of effect. I'm gonna show you a couple chords that are examples of this that I really just love because they stretch out the sound and increase the sustain overall. For instance, my favorite E minor chord on the ukulele is I'm gonna play an open G, then I'm gonna fret 11 on the C string, then I'm gonna play an open E, and I'm going to add 10 on the A string. So it's a 0, 11, 0, 10. And this is an E, B, E, and G note to create our E minor chord. And when I play this, really nice sound, really pops. All right. I'm currently working on an arrangement of uh, the Eagles' Desperado. And in this song, there's a high G note with an E minor chord. This note here, that needs an E minor chord. And I could just move a shape up and play something like this, right? What this is, is nine, seven, seven, ten. just as kind of an example. This is a, a chord shape, no open strings here. But it, it, not a big fan. It's kind of thin sounding, kind of empty. So I used open strings and found using the G and E strings open, I can increase the sustain and the tonal range. I'm using this chord in that instead. Right, just a really, really nice sound using that open type of vibe, right? So that's all I wanna talk about today, was the weaknesses of the ukulele and how using open strings can really, you know, offset a lot of it. Um, you know, it's really fascinating because sometimes we think that the, the best sounds are going to be the hardest things to play, which is oftentimes playing these big shapes up the fretboard. And sometimes just leaving strings open, even though it makes it easier, it also makes it sound better for those reasons. So hope you guys have a great week. I'm really excited to announce the winner next week for the contest, so stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys next week for another episode of Webcam Sessions. Thanks so much.